from here i think the next chapter that we're going to talk about has three important passages in the us right so uh, you went to study your masters right so let's just start by talking about that your time in austin yeah so i uh, applied to the university of texas at austin mm. as uh, one of i think applied to six schools and uh, what fascinated me about this program was that it had a traveling fellowship so in the first semester of our program uh, the studio the entire studio traveled across okay. uh, a lot of the southwest so it was a really fantastic experience with a professor very senior professor he was he was a british professor uh, in urban design okay and uh, we traveled to uh, new mexico arizona in and around texas we we went to mexico city also okay and a few other places in mexico and uh, so that really opened my eyes to a lot that can be done just in terms of the built environment yeah uh, and um, of course the experience of living in another country and the you know sort of uh, learning from other cultures yeah was uh, also very positive so i really enjoyed my two years that i spent there uh, the program was more theoretical so in yeah. addition to the travel component uh, we had a lot of courses built around urban design theory and uh, site planning and of course architecture courses yeah and i also got a chance to do a one summer in england okay where we um, again we traveled and we made lots of sketches and saw lots of interesting buildings so those those were two very good years with a lot of exposure also you know uh, when you said it was southwest us they have yeah. very very distinct architecture style in the south especially right it's because True. there is the True. the mexican influence exactly. is very clear exactly now since you said you were looking a lot at public spaces in these places um i don't have a huge uh, i don't have a great deal of experience traveling around the us but one thing i noticed is things are very structured in how yeah. they want roads to be yeah. and there are a lot of the regulations which are followed right yeah were there some influences in the places that you went to which were more culturally driven yeah uh, unique so, to them so uh, in all my travels i always uh, noted a couple of things mm. one is that um, there was a very strong emphasis on protecting and um, sort of projecting history yeah and uh, for example there are these pueblos yes in new mexico very yeah. beautiful earth architecture a lot of it is gone i think just the foundations in some of these places are remaining yeah but the way in which it is preserved the way in which the story of the past is shared i was very impressed that with whatever little history is there yeah it's uh, communicated so effectively and uh, in our country when i and whenever i saw all these places there were some things that were just maybe 100 years old and, but this, it was so well preserved and story to, told so well i still always think oh my god we have like a thousand times the number of things that we could talk about yeah. i wish that you know those were documented and shared as as well as these so this was something that stayed with me uh, yeah. always and of course other uh, and other thing that was very stayed in my mind was uh, we'd gone on a trip to san antonio mm. and uh, there the city has done remarkable work in converting a river which was not unlike our kuam into a very fantastic urban public space so okay. they basically reengineered the course of the water channel and built these very nice walkways around it at a sort of a level difference from the street yeah and uh, the fact that people 
could put their minds together and make these changes happen. Yeah. Sort of. And when did when did they do this? When did? I when think was this happened in the maybe 70s, 60s, 70s. Okay. So the fact that these are affected, you know, these are these don't happen overnight magically. Yeah. It takes all, a lot of work. Yeah, it takes a lot of work, and people before us have done this in other places. Yeah. So there's no reason why we can't do these things. Yeah, absolutely. And when you talk about the koam, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's something, something that yeah. really. No, you'll be surprised. Yeah. Uh, you'll be surprised at the story of every great riverfront that you can see anywhere in the world. Yeah. Starts with it being a completely degraded space. Mm -hmm. it, could, it could be the Seine, it could be the Thames, it could be rivers in Germany. Yeah. They all have a story where it was not what you see, yeah. it, what it is today. So people yeah. have turned those things around. Yeah. Um, so, so there's something else things. that you said about your uh, time in Austin was that this was the first time you had ever been out of the country. Right. So what, what was, was that, that like when you, you had left your family and friends right. and all back home? Right. I, so it was my first international flight right. that I took at the age of 22 and I yeah. never flown out of the country, but I traveled on my own mm. and just landed in a new place. I had a, my sister's friend came to the airport and picked me up and it was just all very, um, Everything's very big in Texas. Yeah. It's huge. Mm. The portions of food they serve you are huge. Yeah. And just very vast open spaces. And distances between places, right? Because yes. you wouldn't have had any Absolutely. real transportation there. Absolutely. Just distances between places. Of course, I did learn to drive and I got yeah. my license and all of that. Sure. But um, it was a very new cultural experience. Mm. But being from a background where I was quite comfortable going to new places, I embraced it. Yeah. I was like, there's always something to learn from all these people. So yeah. that was good. And so what did you do when, by the time you were um, done in Texas? So then I um, uh, wanted to work. I applied to the uh, to a couple of offices, both in Chicago and in St. Louis. Okay. And uh, was very fortunate, got a, got a job offer from a mid-sized firm in Chicago, which is exactly what I wanted to do. Mm. I didn't want to go to a firm which was very large where I would get lost. And neither did I want to practice in an office which was very small with just two or three people. Because I always had this in the back of my mind that I want to return to India. Right. So the smaller offices do a lot of residential and smaller type of construction, which is not relevant to our context. So I yeah. wanted to work in a... A uh, firm that 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 did mid-sized projects. And, okay. Uh, we had about forty people, and I worked there for about three years. Uh, absolutely loved it because Chicago is a wonderful city uh, for anyone, yeah. but specifically for architects. Yeah. It's got some very historic buildings, and it's got uh, very nice urban spaces. Yeah. So I know people say that the winters are awful, but I, I even love the winters. I just, <laughs> I didn't do. So, so uh, actually, your uh, was it hard getting a job in the US? Very hard. Yeah, because it seems to be hard now. Was it, how hard was it back then? It was very hard. Mm. Uh, so, uh, so I was seeing a friend of mine and who I met in college, who I'm married to now for okay. 20 years. And uh, he was in school at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign, which is about two hours from Chicago. Sure. So I really wanted to find a job in Chicago. And uh, so basically I moved there without a job, uh, stayed in his cousin's place and knocked on many doors. And uh, everyone, uh, getting the first job is always hard because everyone's always saying, we're looking for someone with experience. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, regardless of how I spun the story of my resume, the fact was I didn't have any experience because I did five years in undergrad, went straight into a two years in master's. So basically I had the no only experience, experience I had was some internships uh, over the summers, which I had done throughout, yeah. but that was not substantial. And so once I um, sort of figured out the office that I really wanted to join, 
I was very persistent. <laughs> <laughs> I think I that is understating things when you talk about the story. <laughs> So I uh, met the person there who was in charge of recruiting and I said, I really, really want to work here. And he said, look, we just have, you know, you're, you sound very enthusiastic and you come from a good program, but we literally don't have any place for you to sit in our office. Mm. And then I called him again after a week and then again after two weeks. And then I said, um, and I, you know, in the course of conversation, he happened to mention that, look, we have an intern from Ireland who's come in. He doesn't have any place to sit either. He's sitting in our basement building models. And so that's how short on space we are at the moment. And that's why I can't offer you a job. And I said, uh, it's okay. I'll sit with the intern in the basement and I'll also build them. I'll assist the intern in building models. And uh, so he finally gave up and he said, it's fine. Okay, you're willing to sit in the basement and build models. Go on and join us. And so that's how I got my first job. And uh, what were the kind of projects you worked on there? It turned out to be the most uh, fabulous decision mm. that both my boss took and I took in sitting in the basement and building models because I got, got to work on building a model for a large redevelopment project which was set in St. Louis. Okay. It's called Couple Station and there were these warehouse buildings that were being converted into office and commercial space. And so uh, there I was in the basement working on this model and uh, came up with this uh, idea of covering the spaces between the buildings with the big atrium. Yeah. Which uh, turned out to a big, be a big hit with the clients. Mm. And so I was thereafter promoted from the basement <laughs> to the, the first floor. In the office, like <laughs> Into the first floor. And then I got to work on that project for a year after that as well. Mm. So, yeah, the first job is, is tough, but... Did you do much uh, public space projects at this firm? So we did Couple Station, which was a redevelopment project yeah. on which I worked on for a while. And um, one of the nice things about American offices is it's very merit based. Mm. So every time uh, we went into a meeting, my boss would always tell the client, it was this, it was this young architect's idea that we do this project like this. So they were very open about sharing uh, credit, yeah. which I really enjoyed that uh, culture, the mm. office culture. And um, and that must be something that has translated into how you work here yes, as well, absolutely, right? Credit, absolutely, absolutely. Credit really doesn't get around very no, much. I, Not I haven't enough. forgotten that it takes a team to put things together. Yeah. And that is from my first job to this day. Uh, architecture is not a solo practice at all yeah i think if anyone says that they are not being truthful yeah. it's a team sport and uh, yes an idea can come from anywhere and it takes many people and many craftsmen and many contractors and the client has a very big role it takes a lot of people to put that together it's true for an architecture project but more so for even public space projects yeah it's really a team effort now, when you were in Chicago, you said that Chicago has great public spaces, right? So, how long were you in Chicago for? So, I spent three years there. So, you must have gone around to yeah. different neighborhoods and... Traveled a lot, uh, not only within the city, but also, of course, it's a home of Frank Lloyd Wright. And so, yeah. then we went and saw many interesting buildings in and around Chicago, but also traveled to other parts of the United States uh, mm. from there. Uh, professionally at that time, I was beginning to realize, we were working with a lot of developers at that time, and I uh, was beginning to realize that my education was very focused on design, and really decisions in the built environment are not based only on design. They are based on financial considerations, they are based on uh, governance on rules and all of those things and so I was uh, starting to think that I wanted to study further and look at urban development much more closely mm. so I uh, 
was getting ready to sort of apply for a second master's at the time, though my office was not very happy <laughs> with my decision. Right. But I thought I had spent three years in this firm and I thought it would be a good idea to uh, get another master's degree, which covered those things which I felt had not been covered in my previous education. Yeah. And um, so where did you apply? So I uh, was also around that time, I sort of, we had decided, I was married by then and we decided that we would return to India. Okay. And uh, so this was something I wanted to do before I returned to India. So I applied only to one program uh, at the Graduate School of Design at Harvard. And they offered a post-professional master's that was uh, on the theme of real estate and urban development. Mm. That was called an MDES program. It was uh, meant for uh, people who already had either a master's degree or se uh, several years of work experience. Yeah. And uh, I applied to that program and um, I met a professor uh, who was uh, heading the real estate uh, department there and I gave him my background and I told him this is what I'm interested in, why I'm interested in this and uh, he said yes, um, do apply, we'll see what we can do and I was fortunate that I got in Yeah. and I was very excited about that because um, it covered a lot of things that I had not had exposure to so for example uh, the the educational environment in Cambridge itself is very unique. Okay. You, can, you can take courses at MIT, you can take courses at the Harvard Business School, at the Kennedy School of Government, any of the... So uh, you're not limited to only your department? You're not limited to the design school. Yeah. And by this time, I was uh, sort of beginning to realize that design is a byproduct of so many other things. Yeah. So I took those opportunities and actually took a course in the business school, took a course in the Kennedy School of Government, yeah. audited some classes at MIT. And essentially they allowed us to build our own program. Mm. Uh, I also did a studio when I was there uh, at the GSD, which was based in Shanghai. Oh, okay. Uh, no, actually it was based in Hangzhou, which is about two hours from Shanghai okay. and looked at the uh, development of the city of Hangzhou in the future. So it was one of those uh, future scenarios development type of projects. Right. And the GSD has uh, uh, fantastic professors who come and teach. Each studio is very much ahead of its time in terms of the challenges that they look at, in terms of the design issues that are addressed Yeah. and uh, set uh, all over the world. The studios are all over the world. The students who come there, 80% of them come from all over the world. Mm. And uh, you really meet people. I, I met people from every continent. It's a great deal of exposure. Yeah, huge exposure. And uh, the professors as well, they don't restrict themselves to professors from any one country. You have professors from all over the world who come there yeah. to teach. Uh, so that really opened up my um, interest in so many things and uh, yeah. sort, of, you know, sort of look at the world differently as well. Mm -hmm.